Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Golden Ratio Podcast. I am Jen, GR Mom, joined over distance by GR Dad. Hi. How's it going, GR Dad? Pretty good. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, we are joined over distance. This was I had all these plans that I was pulling together for episode 300, and then we're like, you know what we're going to do? You're going to leave. And so we're just doing a regular episode for episode 300. I, I think it's episode 299A, not 300. Yeah, I I can't do that. I can alter <laughs> reality by my numbering scheme. Yeah, you can. I can I, stave off time, Jen. A stave number of people off. have also pointed out that I <laughs> reuse numbers several times. So this is actually like the 303rd episode or you something. But missed 300. <laughs> I, I feel like that's the people who are like, the new millennium doesn't start until 2001. And I'm like, yeah, I guess. But what really matters is like the nice round number, not like how many episodes there have been. Well, then just adjust the number. Make it 299 again. Uh, no, that's dumb. You've reused numbers before. On accident. On accident. Right. This is episode 57 again. <sighs> All right. Anyway, the cocktail of the week this week uh, is as disappointing as the rest of the week has been. I, uh, I was like... Tuesday, I Monday. Know. What day is today? It's Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> we don't have any dessert in the house. And I, for like the oh. last, even before you left, I kept like turning the oven on. I'm like, I'm going to make cookies or something and then not doing it. And so I was like looking through my little recipe website today and i found this recipe for these like blueberry bars that i had gotten from one of my colleagues that i remember being good and i was like i'm gonna make those and i made them and they're like they have to cool overnight so i like had a couple bites and it's fine but they'll be better tomorrow and i was like these blueberries and like the lemon is really good though maybe i will make a blueberry lemon like whiskey cocktail that sounds great Ooh. so i found a, re a recipe for a blueberry whiskey smash and I guess, hey, like every time I have a smash, it ends up being disappointing. <laughs> and this one was also, I freaking made blueberry simple syrup. I like muddled mint and it was all kind of one note at the end. I didn't drink I, it. I think you're right. Remember the restaurant we used to go to that had a, a drink called the farmer smash? Inga ordered and this drink like three times and he <laughs> like, he didn't like it the first time. And then he ordered the second time and didn't like it. And the third time he's like, I'll have the farmer smash. And I was like, nope. You've had it twice and you didn't like it either time. You will not have it. <laughs> and I thank you for that. But I'm yeah. like that fish in Nemo where I just don't, I just have no <laughs> memory at all. I like went into it every time going, look at the whole menu. Oh, Farmer Smash. That sounds like a great name. I have no idea. What, I'm not reading the ingredients. I'm going to order that. Yeah. And then twice I was like, Ugh, this doesn't taste very good. <laughs> no. <Nope. laughs> Shouldn't remember that. And then the next time I went in again, I was like, ooh, farmer smash. And you were like <laughs> smacking my my hand off the menu, going, get the off no, no, no. So I I agree. I don't know that smash is the name is awesome, but yep. I'm not sure that I've had a, a smash where I've said this is awesome. No. Nope. So anyway, that's cocktail of the week, the blueberry whiskey smash. You all may like it. It's not bad. I it just was not for me. <laughs> Not after that recommendation. That's like someone coming up to you and going, taste this and see if it tastes weird. Yeah. It's going to taste weird. That's the cocktail of the week. You ready for administrative corner? <laughs> yes. I love administrative corner. I've been waiting days for administrative corner. I, I haven't like slept for administrative corner. All right. I have two items. Awesome. One is that I was out for a run last week. And, uh, and I got kind of halfway down the road to nowhere on our island. <laughs> and uh, there were a couple chickens on the side of the road. Yeah. And so I got my camera out to like take videos of them and harass them as usual. And I stuck my hand out and I was like, I want to pet. And the chickens are like, fine. And I was like, wait, really? And they're like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, like we're not enthused, but if you really want to. And I pet the chickens i straight up like not just glanced my hand across their tail which i've done before like like a nice little strokey pet 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 that you finally found some chickens that are like pet is okay yeah also i don't think this lady's gonna eat me she smells like a vegetarian <laughs> i'm gonna work up to being friends with them because i want to pick one up and take a selfie with it oh yeah i hear if you turn them upside down they they go prone I don't want a selfie with an upside down chicken. <laughs> well, maybe you'd have to stand on your head. <laughs> I'm not sure the chicken's actually upside down then. Uh, there's something there. <laughs> okay. I think I could fix it. That's item one. That's excellent. Item two is Inga went to the P.O. box this weekend 
And I am starting a new project, which I haven't tweeted about in the Golden Ratio stuff, but on my professional page, um, f- that w- to basically stock the little free library, starting in the Keys and then working my way up through Florida um, with gay books, kids' books, but mostly like fiction with gay characters because there, we got some issues with that here in Florida. And I was like, I'm going to do it. So I called it the LFL, like little free library, LFL GBTQ project. And I was like, if you have some like old queer lit laying around, mail it to me so I can stick it in the PO boxes. And people have sent me like a full shelf full of books, like some that they had used. Some people have sent me like, this is my favorite book. I just sent you 10 copies from Amazon. Yeah. Uh, so I've got a bunch of copies, many books I have multiple copies of. Uh, some stuff from used places. Like, it's great. I'm so excited. I'm getting the book plates in the mail tomorrow and I'm going to start distributing them. Um, but anyway, so Inga went to the post office box this weekend. There were 11 packages. He's like, here, you got 11 packages. And so I was going through them and then I was like, Inga, this package is for you. And he's like, no. No. And I was like, yeah, I don't know what it is, but it's not a book. All my packages were books for my little gay library project. And Ingo, you can say what was in the package. Well, I... I opened the box and then there was this like wrapped thing. And as I was unwrapping, I was like, it's kind of like a bottle shape. Maybe it's, maybe it's alcohol. That's fine. I like alcohol. So I'm unwrapping it and it's PB blaster. (laughs) (laughs) Or is it P blaster? I don't know. PB blaster. PB blaster. It's the, the amazing space age chemical that penetrates and lubricates lubricant and penetrant because my other because my other uh pb blaster can is almost empty because i'm using it on everything i use that stuff on everything we have a chain for our anything that looks slightly rusty i'm using it on that anything that moves i'm using it on that When you get home, I have a new project for you because I was cleaning out our little ground level enclosure. Yes. um, You know, just purging stuff from there. You mean the lizard hut? (laughs) The lizard hut. Uh, And I I took the, actually the former cheese wagon, not the one that Hops is using, but the one that's a little too big for the elevator. We kind of have that on the ground floor. And a lot of times it holds coconuts, but sometimes we use it to move stuff around. Yeah. And I use that to haul stuff out to the curb. But the front, part like where that where the wheels yeah, the pivot steering. is all rusted yeah. so i sprayed some on there but it needs more and it that needs should to penetrate some more i've used it mm-hmm. too it's it's i put it i've laid it on its side i've that's a good project i'll use up yeah. the rest of that can first can and then, <laughs> and then half the second can excellent anyway it was a great haul it was like christmas in june yeah the pb blaster that stuff's great it smells <laughs> quite impressive <laughs> it smells like a chemical factory after you use it but that just means it's working yep yeah. all right you ready for dog updates sure reluctantly i leave administrative corner but i'm always happy to hear about our dogs <laughs> well dog updates are kind of administrative this week tbh oh. uh i wonder what hopper's up to but go ahead <laughs> so we Uh, Hopper is not doing the best in terms of her elbow. She's fine other than that, but her elbow is really painful. She got another, you know, when she was in Ohio State, she got an injection of hyaluronic acid, which is a joint lubricant and some uh, steroids. And that seemed to really help her for a while. And we could tell it was wearing off. And we talked a few weeks ago that she got another one um, down here from our vet and it really didn't do much for her. And I don't know if that's cause our vet used a different joint lubricant or if it's just, you know, it was a sort of one-time thing and she's not really responding anymore, but like she has a hard time even standing up. Yeah. She can force herself to walk some steps, but it doesn't always work. Like her, her mobility is extremely limited and she like wants to do all sorts of stuff because she's energetic and happy and feels good, but she can't because that elbow is so painful. So we have exhausted all of the available options in the U.S. And the thing that we were holding out for was Labrella, which is this new, like totally new type of treatment for arthritis. Um, It's a monoclonal antibody treatment, which you've maybe heard of from COVID. And it seems to 
from like the reading I've done seems to target like the nerve receptors in the arthritis spot. Um, but anyway, it's been available in Europe for a while and it won, you know, like best new medical development of the year, whatever last year, the year before, um, it's been available in Canada. And so we were waiting, waiting. And a few weeks ago, it got approved in the U S by the FDA. I think when we were in, right when we were in Maryland or right after we left, so I was like, great. My vet emailed me. She's like, it's approved. I've ordered it. And I'm like, awesome. And I'm like, okay, it's going to take a while. Now it like says on their website, like, oh, we're going to be shipping it in like late 2023. So like fall, maybe, you know, maybe like the end of the year. I'm like, Hops needs it now. Yeah. And so, of course, we're like looking where can we order it and can we just get it shipped to us? But it like has to be refrigerated. So that's extra complicated. And there's like UK sites that you can order it from, but like they ship to the UK. And I was like, Canada maybe? And I found a Canadian online vet pharmacy, but they require a prescription from a Canadian vet and they have to ship to a Canadian address. And I was like, okay, let's find a Canadian vet who will write us a prescription for this. And I talked to a couple and they're like, look, like I'm not super comfortable just like writing you a prescription, even though like our vet has prescribed it. Like they're like, we need to see your dog. And you know, I don't know if this is going to work. And I was like, fine. And I was like, literally like, okay, maybe we just have to bring Hopper to Canada. What is the closest Canada <laughs> to Key West, which is quite far. And uh, Niagara Falls was the closest. And I was, so I was like, all right, well, like, I guess we can start looking. And like, as I'm thinking about this on my computer, I get a DM from friend of the squad, Lynn, who lives and works at a vet clinic in Niagara Falls and was like, Hey, uh, you know, I heard you're looking for a vet in Canada. Uh, I don't know what that's about, but I work at a vet clinic. Can I help with something? And I was like, Oh my gosh, like you're in exactly <laughs> the spot that I need somebody. Yes. Uh, here's what we want to do. Like we will bring Hopper to Canada that we and like bring all of her records and our vet has prescribed this and we want someone who's willing to like give her the shot in Canada but also send us home with some of this because we can't go to Canada every month <laughs> like that's really far and uh like within an hour I had an email from a vet at like a you know partner clinic that uh Lynn worked at and she's like yeah you know I I'd be totally happy to do that and I was like okay, like here's our schedule. She was like, yeah, how about like Wednesday or Thursday? And I was like, heckin' great. And then like Ingo was napping. And so I was like, I can't wake him up. I can't wake him up. And then as soon as I heard him in there, I was like, Ingo, you're leaving tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so that was all Sunday that, that this whole kind of plan came together. Uh, you guys were super helpful because it like I put on Twitter, like, do I know any Canadian vets? And people had all kinds of wild speculation about why I was asking. But I really just wanted like a vet <laughs> in Canada, like exactly what I was looking for. But people sent me like, oh, you know, if you're trying to move a dog across international borders, here's how to do it. And, you know, uh, this rescue group knows about bringing dogs from overseas. I'm like, this is all fascinating. But I really just actually am looking for a vet in Canada. Uh, <laughs> But anyway, that's why this is happening. So uh, it, so that's the Hopper situation. So Ingo left. So we're recording on Tuesday. You drove all day yesterday. Yeah, I, from, and half the day I didn't know when I was going to Canada, whether we had an appointment and when I was going to Canada. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was all Sunday, right? Yeah. So like no, the office is closed. So she's like, yeah, I'll you know put you in the schedule on Monday. And so I was like, bye, Ingo. Like leave. <laughs> we gotta make sure you're there. I mean, on time. you were not at all um, dismissive or curt about it. We, we we were both on the same page. But yes, yeah. we did say goodbye on Monday morning very early. Yeah. So you drove all the way from Key West to our house in Silver Spring. Like, there's technically a more direct route to Niagara Falls, but it's like 45 minutes shorter. And so, like, why not go to our house that like Hops is super comfortable in, and you know, stay there and be relaxed. So. You did a long day yesterday. Yeah, and I'm still not completely in Niagara Falls, but much, much within a half day, a long half day. Yeah, it's seven hours from our house in Maryland to Niagara Falls. Yep. So. Um, Which is like nothing. I do that to go to Walmart. Not not to Walmart, to Whole Foods. It really does highlight how different our life is being this far away from everything, like on a little island in the bottom corner of oh, the country. Yeah. Because, like, if we just lived in Maryland, I, if we wouldn't have even had this discussion. It would have been like, okay, like, where are we going to go in Canada? Because it's all, like, you know, a half day's trip, a seven, eight-hour drive. Half day's trip is right, yeah. 
So anyway, that's what's happening. You want to say anything interesting about the drive? No, Hops is very good on the drives. I, I'm 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 always pleasantly surprised. She used to be, she used to like really get anxious and and not drink and not eat for I think the whole drive. She would just sit there and kind of pant and have these kind of anxious eyes. But now she just kind of sleeps and uh, and then seems to relax. She eats and drinks in the car, so it makes it much easier psychologically. Yeah. Even though physically she's banged up, but you know, she's, she's okay while she's in the car and she's in, I mean, it might help that I can reach back and pet her. And I kind of did the whole 20 she hours did that thing where, yeah, when I stopped petting her, she would kind of snake her head through the middle of the, between the two <laughs> seats and kind of look at me, <laughs> do like a hop, uh, a guac look back. Uh, and then I'd have to pet her some more. So yeah, I, my, one of my arms is much better, like developed than the other <laughs> one right now. <laughs> the reach back arm. <laughs> So you guys obviously spend all day today in Maryland. And I think as of last time we talked to you, the plan is that you're going to spend all day Wednesday in Maryland and then you're going to get up early on Thursday and drive up there for a 2 p.m. appointment. Yeah, because then... it's 2 p.m. So it doesn't really make sense to get there early in the morning. And then I'm just going to what sit there and watch Niagara Falls for five hours. I mean, the longer, the, the less time, you know, Hops has to be out of the house the better for her yeah so i yeah i think i'll just get up early on on thursday and book it up there and then there's a pretty good chance i'll be back here back here by thursday night unless i stop somewhere yeah. on the way yeah i mean we've got freedom to do whatever but if you're done at the vet by like three then you'd be home by 10 or 11 yeah. which is like on one hand a really long day on the other hand it would be so hard to be like all right like i'm done at the vet at three obviously you're not gonna like go to bed then right so you're going to drive for a few hours. That'd be so hard for like, okay, it's seven o'clock. I've got four hours to go, right. three or four hours to go. I'm in Philadelphia. Like, what am I going to stop here? Yeah, <laughs> like, I'm going to take a hotel in Philadelphia. If you're in Philadelphia, you have done something terribly wrong. Well, that high, that like, you know, uh, latitude or longitude or whatever it is. <laughs> uh, so anyway, yeah, we'll keep you guys updated. Um, if you want like play-by-play map directions uh you can follow us on patreon where there's like a link to like a live map and so it's it's not like actually gps tracking ingo but like every half hour hour i drop a little pin i put a picture of like <laughs> hops every time ingo sends me one so I mean, you get to find my ingo but that's kind of proprietary to for you yes i think i'm the only one with the find my ingo app <laughs> I hope so. I don't. I didn't consent to anyone else tracking me. I think Opera has it actually. <laughs> she just knows. She it's like a vampire, it like her... bites you, and then it like knows where you are it's, forever. Well, I was thinking more like carrier pigeon, but but vampire is good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the only other dog update is like CB's mouth is still kind of messed up. Um, we kept having to like push back the appointment where they like wedged us in this week. And finally yesterday I just t took a picture of his like growth look gross looking mouth and sent it to the vet. I texted her and I was like, this is what it looks like. We have an appointment Friday. Is that okay? And she's like, Ooh, that doesn't look good. <laughs> <laughs> yes. She's like, let me talk to the other vet tonight uh, and see. And the other vet was like, well, you know, he's really prone to infections. And so we don't want to mess with it until it's like had more time to heal. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like it actually looks like it's doing OK. And so we got a new antibiotic. Uh, we're still going to I'm going to take him in on Friday to get it looked at again. The vet thinks eventually they're going to have to pull the tooth that was like next to the growth and like do a little flap over the gums. But obviously they want to wait until it has healed as much as possible. So. Brody. Everyone, otherwise, everything's fine. Brody. Yeah. I know. Come on. Poor guy. He's, it looks really he's sore. He's like, I keep eating grass, but it hasn't really done anything. But I'm yeah. going to keep doing it. <laughs> More. So that's it for dog updates. Yep. Uh, I do have a ramblings item. Oh, me too. I have, I have ramblings. You want to go, go first ahead. or you want me to go first? Uh, I'll go first with one of mine. I forgot to, <clears throat> I forgot to mention how much I ate on the drive yesterday. Oh, yes. <laughs> I have, I have, I'm trying, I used to eat gummy bears, which are fun to eat and sugary. Um, but I'd go through, you know, a whole bag of gummy bears and then have regrets. 
So now I'm bringing a bag of baby carrots, usually, and I can just chomp on those and I feel somewhat virtuous. Yeah. Uh, And I'm chomping something. But this time I made the mistake of bringing a two pound bag of baby carrots. And by like 11 p.m. they were done. (laughs) <laughs> I was like, I know I gave like three to Hopper. Fair enough. I gave Hopper a few. You ate two pounds of carrots. I ate two pounds of carrots wow. in 24 hours. I <laughs> ate two apples, two pounds of carrots, two sandwiches, about six of those little individual tubs of Pringles that I found <laughs> at the bottom of a cabinet somewhere. Um, two mandarin oranges. I think that's it. That's a pretty good day and i controlled myself because at bucky's they have something called sausage on a stick (laughs) and i did not get one of those (laughs) it's a very spicy sausage bear just on a stick (laughs) it's it's a a little bizarre i wanted bread next time (laughs) one drive that ingo took he brought um like a cooler and in it he put like the hard-boiled eggs we had in the house and i think you ate a dozen hard-boiled eggs I mean, I, I all, ate all the eggs I could. It was, I had, that was. That was over two days, though. You stopped that time, I think. <laughs> I did, but I did. a day. You finished them. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> uh, if it's in the car, I'll probably eat it. Yeah, that's true. I Oh, I forgot. I also had some beef jerky and some combos. Of course. I mean, necessary. <laughs> it goes without saying. I mean, that's just baseline. But look, I, I ate a lot of carrots. Like, that feels healthier than if I'd ate, eaten two pounds of gummy bears. Oh, absolutely. Although, too, oh, that's sounding pretty good to me right now. Gummy bears. <laughs> well, you got another long good. drive coming up, so maybe you could do gummy yeah, bears to no, Canada. No, I got, I got the carrots this time again. <laughs> so that's my one one item. Why don't you go, and then I'll do my other rambling item last. I'll okay. sandwich yours with mine. That's great. Yeah. Uh, CNN, or actually, I guess HGTV, but posted through CNN, put out a list this a uh, couple weeks ago of the most popular dog breeds in 10 countries. So mm-hmm. I'm going to give this to you as a quiz, Ingo. Oh, oh, I like it. I like it. Okay. Can I win? Yeah, you can. We'll okay. we'll see what percent you get right. So you're oh, just gra- guessing the number one most popular dog in this the country, US. In, the U.S. in whatever country. Um, and so let me give you the methodology. Uh, have you ever thought about what other people or countries would put as their ideal choice of dog? Finder.com analyzed online searches for dog breeds in 161 countries to find out which pooches end up on top. So this isn't like AKC registry. This is online searches? These are dogs that people are searching for oh. on finder.com. All right. So I'm going to give you the countries that they have here, and you're going to tell me the number one most searched for dog in that country on finder.com, which I guess is where you might go if you want to, like, find a dog. Finder.com? Finder, because there's, like, Pet Finder. I don't know if that's it or not. But anyway, finder.com. This is their ranking. Okay. Okay. United States of America. What is the most popular? This this is going to be easiest. Labrador Retriever. Nope. Golden. Yes. Okay. Okay. Japan. Hmm. No, you can't Akita. make that noise. Yes, the Akita. All right. Okay. No more no more of that weird noise, though. So it makes me think. It lets me think. You got to do it in your head silently. Oh, this is going to impair my thinking. Okay, go ahead. Uh, you got the Akita right. That's good. Hmm? Uh, the United Kingdom. Corgi. I give you a, a three-second countdown. Corgi. For each one. All right. No. French Bulldog. In the UK. Oh. They like the French Bulldog. All right. Nice. Germany. Oh, it's something different. Dachshund. Chihuahua. That's funny. The Chihuahua is the That's most popular. Funny. Mexico. Chihuahua. The pug. <laughs> this, is, this is suspicious. Uh, Slovakia. I don't know why that's on. I mean, Chihuahua. <laughs> it's the Cane Corso. Oh, no, I didn't even know that. I mean, I sort of have heard of that, but go ahead. Okay. Italy. Uh, the uh, pug, the Maltese. Hmm. That's a little one, right? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's little and white, and it has big, long fur. Oh, the little like flying rugs. Uh, I guess. Like draped down, the fur kind of drapes down. Yeah, they look kind of like a mop. Do they have but bows? They- Sometimes. Yes, bows to hold it up off their face. I think I know what you're, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Niue. 
It is a small island nation in the South Pacific, northeast of New Zealand. Oh my God. Uh, chows. Chow Chow. <laughs> this is the Basset Hound. Like, why is that on this list? I don't know. <laughs> they have like three of them, probably. I know. All right. Just two more. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Vietnam. Chow. The Poodle. Oh, okay. Finally, France. The Poodle. The Rottweiler. This is very suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you would have a negative reaction, which is like mostly why. <laughs> the searches are more triggered by like I saw this in a movie or a TV show than than like I've I'm gonna get this dog. Listen, I, I told you the methodology. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yep. I, I'm just happy I pulled Akita because it's the only Japanese dog I could think of. There you yeah. go. They have a whole a whole, they have a list of every single country. The Golden Retriever is the most popular dog in Brunei, Canada, Myanmar, Colombia, Cyprus, Jordan, Kuwait, Lebanon, Mongolia, and the United States. Mm. Is there? You, I told you you were not allowed to make is that it, sound. Is it though? It, I <laughs> is mean, it though? According to this methodology, which I did disclose at the beginning. <laughs> is there any dog you'd like me to search for to tell you what country it is the most popular in? Yes, the Dachshund. Uh, uh, zero countries. How about what's the most popular dog in Holland? Um, that's actually not called Holland. Dutchland. No, it's called the Netherlands. The Chihuahua. Oh, yeah. The Chihuahua. Yeah. Chihuahua is the most popular in most countries. I mean, it's little, I guess. The uh. Chihuahua. Is the most popular dog in Austria, Belgium, the Dominican Republic, Germany, Monaco, the Netherlands, St. Martin, and Spain. Wow. How about Switzerland? Uh, Switzerland isn't on the list. <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> 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 okay. It's not on the list. All right. That's right, very, right scroll down not a very important is, country. They have no way, but they don't have Switzerland. They don't have Switzerland. <laughs> Weird. They have a country of like twenty three thousand people in the Pacific, but they don't. Saint Pierre and Miquelon, Saint Vincent and the Grenadines, San Marino, but no. Uh, okay. No. Oh no! Wait, no. They have Sweden. No Switzerland. No. What's Sweden? The Pomeranian. Come on, these right. little dogs are the most popular. I guess that makes sense that most people can get a little dog. More people can get little dogs. Yeah. All right, your turn for your last ramblings item. Oh, I did a science. I'm doing a science here in Maryland. <laughs> yeah, you are. Because they have DoorDash here. Yeah. And I order dinners here, even something as exotic sometimes as sweet green or, you know, Chipotle. Hey, what kind of food did you get tonight? Mandalayan food. Burmese food. Man, right. Mandalay right. is the restaurant. And it's a place there, but Burma or Myanmar. It's, it's real good. So, yeah, it wasn't. I mean, but I, I was I was saying sweet green and chipotle because we can't get it in the keys, so it actually is kind of like exotic stuff that we get here. Yeah. Um, and so one of my pet peeves, <laughs> you have a screen door on your front door that opens out. Yep, as most so, do. One of my pet peeves, and this has been triggered mostly when it's like grocery deliveries or something, is when the delivery people are sort of oblivious to the fact that the screen door opens out and put everything right in front of the screen door, thus trapping me in the house. Yep. I cannot get out. I cannot move the screen door if there's a heavy enough stuff out there. Uh, and I can't get at the groceries. So it's really, it's kind of a prank that they're pulling. And I initially, I was like, just kind of irritated. And then I was like, and then I, I had some deliveries where the delivery person clearly was thinking, and put the packages like next to the screen door so I could, you know, open the screen door, grab the packages, close the screen door. That was nice. That made me happy. And so then I then I started, based on a very small initial data set, I started noticing that the female delivery drivers tended to put the things on the side and the male delivery drivers kind of just dumped everything in front of the screen door, thus trapping me in here or forcing me to push the stuff, you know, over. And so I started tracking it. And you helped me. Yeah. Because you're what? a science professor. <laughs> I am. And what does your data say so far? It's a little bit more muddled than I would have hoped. Not every male delivery driver has put it in front of the screen door. 
But when it is put in front of the screen door, it has always been a male. Yep. Thus trapping me in my, <laughs> in my house. <laughs> or forcing me to push the thing over. Uh, you know. Mm-hmm. So note to everyone who does deliveries, if screen doors open out, and I think they always do. <laughs> or door doors. Don't pile stuff. Yeah, sometimes front doors open out. Don't pile stuff right in front of it. Imagine the arc of the door <laughs> as it opens and try to leave some space for that. Otherwise, the people can't get their stuff or leave their house. Okay. You don't want them climbing out the window. So tonight, uh, it was put in right in front of the screen door. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I just have to knock everything over, curse <laughs> silently to myself. Huh. But it's science. It's excellent. This is excellent science. I hope you're writing it down because that's a really important part of science. I can. It's all in my head. It's that's fun. that. No. It's all no. up here. No. <laughs> and I'm also drawing so many conclusions from this based on my supposition and little interpretive stories that I'm adding to things. <laughs> yeah, you do a lot of that. That's where I leave the path of science and I oh, enter the, the, the path of, oh, I don't know. Wisdom and like wisdom, <laughs> higher knowledge. Huh, okay, <laughs> or assumptions, biases, and prejudices. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they just weren't raised right. If they, oh my god! All right, we're moving before. on to Taste of the Keys. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, time for Taste of the Keys. The headline <laughs> is Navy F five N goes down off Key West, prompting helicopter oh. rescue. I know. A Navy pilot had to eject from a training jet and was rescued from the ocean near Key West, Florida, on Wednesday. This is last Wednesday. The F-5N aircraft went into the water about 25 miles from Boca Chica Field on Wednesday morning. The pilot was assigned to Fighter Squadron Composite 111, known as the Sundowners, based at Naval Air Station Key West. Yeah, good job, Maverick. You really, base... you really screwed that one up. <laughs> the base launched an MH-60S Seahawk helicopter and rescued the pilot who was taken to a Miami hospital for further evaluation. Yeah, they when they... they uh, this is... I just thought this was just in the movie, but they actually do use these F5s as uh, simulated MiGs. They actually have little stars on their tail, tails painted on their tails at the Naval Air, Air Base. A website for the annual Key West Air Show noted that all of the pilots in the Sundowner Squadron are former F-18 Hornet pilots, and most are Top Gun graduates. Yeah, I mean, he but he was playing the Russian, and apparently someone must have shot him down. <laughs> Well, too effective. They were too effective. They, so they don't know the cause, but the guy seems like he was okay. Okay. All right. Brace yourself. I'm ready. Milchmädchenrechnung. Milkmaid what? Good, good, good. Milchmädchenrechnung. Yeah. I don't know. Calculation. Uh, I wouldn't have got there. Milkmaid calculation. And it, it means kind of like... A naive, way too simplistic, usually calculation. I mean, it's been used um, euphemistically, or not euphemistically, but symbolically for other, for just lack of logic. But it's just kind of like where you go, you know, I I found $10. And so the difference between having the $10 and not having the $10 is $20. So I'm like $20 richer. Hmm. You're just like it's math, but it's it makes it it's way too like facile and it makes no sense. Or you know you're you're ignoring a factor, or you've skipped a step, or you're not doing it per capita or something. You're just like this is one Milchmädchenrechnung, die eigentlich nichts beweist, right? It doesn't actually prove anything. It's it's sort of based on faulty logic. Yeah, if that makes sense. That's a cool word. Yeah, it's also long, which is, you know, <laughs> German words of the week. If you're going to have German yeah. words, they might as well be really long. Good job. Uh, well, it's going to be another exciting week. Uh, and then next week, I'm going to be out of town. I'll probably be in Maryland when we record, and you'll be back here. And <laughs> we'll some, trade places. Someday we'll see each other again. Keep, we'll uh, sit in each other's already warmed seats. Yeah. Well, you're driving, and I'm flying, so. I know. It's going to take longer than that. I just meant, you know. As a as a simile, a indeed. metaphor. Indeed. There's something there. An analogy. All right. Well, uh, thanks, you guys, for listening. And uh, send good driving vibes to Hopper and to your dad. And until next time, Slava Ukraini. And don't bite anyone unless they ask you to. That's right. Bye. Bye. Bye.